Hello and assalamu alaikum everyone. A very warm welcome to the Strategic Business Leader Webinar to Success for June 2022 exams. I am your tutor, Kashif Kamran. Now today is the day three of this webinar to success and the agenda of the day three is just like the agenda for the day two as we are focusing on the September, December 21 paper on the practice platform and uh, the learnings from the day to yesterday will be carry forward to the day three today and we will be exploring more do's and don'ts of the September December 21 paper in the session today the day three so let's resume the day three so welcome welcome to the day three of the webinar to success strategic business leader for exams in June 2022. Let's see what is in store for the day three. Now, the, the carry forward effect from the day two, a deep investigation of the September, December 21 exam paper, and that investigation continues from the day two. If anyone has missed the day two uh, before watching the day three, it is very, very essential that you all watch the day two first in order for the day three to make sense. Evaluation of the examiner report, because we didn't have time for that evaluation on the day two. So I will be doing the evaluation today. Uh, marking schemes have been deleted because we discussed the marking schemes yesterday uh, with clarity on the day two. So no marking schemes today. And finally, the do's and don'ts of the practice platform that will continue. Now, just before proceeding further, these are the key learnings from the day two yesterday. Number one, I was very clear on dumping task into the response option in the first 10 minutes. And I guided you about that, right? So when in the first 10 minutes, you will read the task and you will dump the task into the response options. And I demonstrated that. Number two, understanding of the professional marks what to demonstrate and how. And that demonstration line of the examiner was very, very important. So examiner was telling you demonstrate commercial acumen or demonstrate skepticism or demonstrate evaluation or demonstrate communication. But examiner was also telling you how to demonstrate it. And that was the picking point. And if anyone picks that up, you are a brilliant student. Uh, and I hope you gained that understanding of how to demonstrate. So if anyone is learning definitions of commercial acumen, communication, skepticism, evaluation of no use, because examiner will exactly tell you how would you be demonstrating that in exam context. We do, we do talk about the journal professionalism as well, because that journal professionalism also is part of the professional marks. If you uh, use headings, short paragraphs, and uh, no paragraph should be longer than four sentences. Uh, you are not repeating information again and again in your answer, and you're putting the answer in the right format. That is equally important along with the demonstration of the skill being asked for. So number two and number three were extremely important and we did had clear word on this yesterday. Understanding of the marking scheme, that was pretty simple. Two marks per valid point developed. So you look at the number of marks, you divide it by two and you, carry, and you, you, you imagine how much to write in exam context. Importance of conclusion uh, when asked to assess and evaluate. So if the examiner is asking you to assess and evaluate, you have to give a conclusion, right? Uh, in a report writing, it is essential because at the end of the report, you give a conclusion. Even though the examiner is asking for assess or evaluate or not, but wherever the examiner asks for assess and evaluate, irrespective of the format, you have to give a conclusion because that's extremely important because that is the literal meaning of the word assess and evaluate. So assess and evaluate means because you're looking at the pros and cons and you're looking at the opportunities and threats. So you have to conclude down uh, in one 
favor. So exercising the judgment, right, becomes extremely important with evaluation and assessment. And the last thing, linking answer to case study as much as possible. And that's exactly what I will be demonstrating today. But I hope I was clear on that, if I can get your feedback quickly, that one of the best way to gain your professional marks is to link your answer as much as possible to the case study. Uh, we, we have Optima and Optima is a leisure club. So linking everything to Optima, uh, linking everything to the information about Optima, linking everything to the environment of Optima or linking everything to the challenges of Optima to the opportunities of Optima. So it, as much as possible, your answer should be linked to Optima. And the more it's linked to Optima in September, December 21 paper, you are not just gaining your technical marks, but you are better gaining your professional marks as well. I hope you are clear on this recap from the day two, and I hope you are affirmative that this was exactly what we discussed yesterday on the day two. Now let's proceed on and let's start with the day three. Now we need to write the answer today, right? So the very first question uh, we had yesterday, I will be using my Word file as well and the practice platform as well, back to back, because I need to uh, write the answer within a stipulated time so I will be switching between my Word file and the practice platform, but I will be giving you guidance of the practice platform, so you should not be worried about it. I hope in front of your screen, you can see the practice platform now, the one we were using yesterday. And on the left panel of the practice platform, on the left panel of the practice platform, we have the word processor. And in the word processor, we dump the task number 1A. So let's open the word processor. I hope you can see the word processor and the task number 1A has been dumped there. Now we exactly know what is to be done in task number 1A. We need to assess the value to the to Optima of customer segmentation. If Optima uh, undertakes customer segmentation, what, if, what value will it get? And what are ways, what are ways in which Optima can segmentize the customer? We had 12 marks, so we need to write six points. And we need to demonstrate the commercial acumen skill in, in, uh, in showing awareness of the usefulness of customer segmentation to Optima. How useful uh, customer segmentation is to Optima. So if we can connect every usefulness to Optima or we can connect every value to Optima, we are gaining our three professional marks. I hope you're clear on that, right? Because we were discussing the same breakdown of the 12 marks and the three marks yesterday. So we need to answer the briefing note for the finance director, right? So let's go down to the task number 1A. Let's open the task again. Uh, let's, let's read what was the examiner telling us about the task 1A. Uh, the opening paragraph, right? Uh, before every requirement is extremely important because it sets the tone of what you need to do. Now, just, just look at the task 1A on your screen. And before the task, there is an intro paragraph. Now, that is something extremely important because that sets the tone of what is required. Let's, let's, let's read that out. As a result of several challenges uh, affecting the fitness and leisure industry in Sealand, Optima Board is about to discuss how it could strengthen and protect its position in the market. So they're, they're a bit concerned about the challenges which are developing in the leisure industry in Sealand and Optima board uh, wants to strengthen their position uh, in, uh, in the market. Now that's extremely important. The, the board of directors are concerned about strengthening their position in the market or competitive position in the market. Full stop, the finance director has asked you to assist him in preparing for these discussions. So let's see who you are. You need to write a briefing note for the finance director and you need to tell finance director what is the value of customer segmentation or the most appropriate ways in which customer segmentations could be carried out. And you need to, uh, you need to uh, understand at the back of the mind why they want to do the customer segmentation, why, why they want to segmentize the customer. 
because Optima board is concerned about strengthening their position or protecting their position in the market. So one of the value of customer segmentation has to be strengthening and protecting the market. So when you read the opening paragraph, at least you get some background that the customer segmentation is done with an objective to strengthen the market or it's been done with an objective to protect the position in the market or to protect the market share in the market. Is, is that clear to all of you? So is that yellow line in the introduction playing a crucial part when we are writing the answer for the value of customer segmentation to Optima, right? So opening paragraphs can have a key line, right? And that key line can really be impactful when you start writing the answer for 1A. So please ensure um, that you do read the opening paragraph. Yes, yes, Alana. Customer segmentation and market segmentation is identical. Uh, customer is narrow, market is broader. The market is like Pakistan, India, or market is like uh, New York and London. We're talking about cities or countries, uh, but customers are like by age, uh, customers are like gender, customers are like behavior, customers are like by their attitudes. So we're talking about individuals, right? So market is the country, market is the city, right? And the customers are individual, though the way to segmentize them is the same. So you, you're very right in that context, right? Okay, let's, let's move on back and looking at the 1A. Uh, I'm taking the 1A to my Word file and I'll, I'll write some of the answer on the, on the platform as well to guide you how to go about it. But just to save my time and to do a broader analysis, because eventually I have to save the Word file and share with you. So I'll try dumping more on the Word file for the benefit of the students, right? Okay, now in 1A, we know what to do and we need to read a bit of the case study. But just before that, I'm taking things to my Word file. I hope you can see the Word file in front of you. Task 1A. This is the opening paragraph of Task 1A. And I'm just let me copy the requirement of Task 1A, what we exactly discussed on day two yesterday. Just let me bring the Task 1A down from my day two yesterday. Okay, here is the task 1A. A briefing note and we did the analysis. Okay, that's control C. Let's bring it down to the day three now. There is something very important that you will be learning today and that's a surprise which comes in the next 10 minutes. Okay, uh, I've just copied the requirement on the screen. I hope you all can see that. So uh, Optima board is about to meet to discuss how to strengthen and protect its position in the market, right? So uh, one of the value, I hope you all agree with me, one of the value of customer segmentation would be to strengthen and protect the position Optima has in the market. So I think one of the benefit is uh, protecting the market share or gaining the market share or strengthening the market share, uh, or strengthening the competitive position. Is that what the Optima Board of Directors is looking for, right? So we need to develop a briefing note for the finance director, who we are. Let's, let's read the case study to identify who we are in the case study. Let's go back to the case, uh, who we are. Uh, Let's open the overview. Right. Can you just uh, uh, see the overview in front of your screen? I'm just reading it out and we'll extract some important information, right? Uh, I, I, I'll read quickly because we need to save time. Uh, Optima, just let me increase the size. Okay. Optima Leisure known as Optima is a listed company. Okay, that's important. It's a listed company. So I'll just highlight that listed company, which owns and operates high quality fitness and leisure craft. So th their focus is on high quality, right? So they're not focusing on the price, uh, less price. They're focusing on high quality. It clubs are located exclusively in Sealand. So they're having all the clubs in a country, Sealand, a country which has a population of nearly 20 million. So 20 million people, uh, there must be a lot of diversity. Optima was established 20 years ago. 
operating two small gyms in Sealand. It currently operates 55 fitness and leisure clubs throughout Sealand and approximately 230,000 members. Look at the customer segmentation here. Among the 230,000 members, uh, there might be different ages, different genders, uh, different behaviors, different lifestyles, different attitudes. So segmentizing them and uh, adapting uh, to their needs or marketing according to the needs uh, will help us gain more loyalty of our members, right? So every member uh, will be different in terms of lifestyle, attitudes, behaviors, uh, and you need to tailor uh, the club facilities or club marketings or club correspondence with these 230,000 members. So quite a lot of members, right? And 55 fitness centers. In addition to the high quality gym facilities offered at each club, uh, most clubs have swimming pools and tennis courts. So they're offering diversified sort of sports. They do have swimming pools and they do have the tennis courts as well, apart from the gym facilities, right? Uh, all clubs run a wide range of exercise classes for members every week. Optima also runs swimming lessons for children. So look, look at the customer segmentations. They have children's and provide tennis coaching classes for all levels of abilities. For all levels of ability, they offer the tennis classes. They also offer swimming lessons for children, customer segmentation. To date, Optima has achieved most of the growth organically, but it has undertaken two small scale acquisition of a high quality fitness and leisure clubs in Sealand in the last 10 years. So two acquisitions in the last 10 years. Optima has a basic website, uh, which it uses to present up-to-date information about the business where members can register and make inquiries. Optima currently has a limited social media presence and no, not doing much of the social media marketing. Instead, it relies on word of mouth, TV, radio, and poster advertisement throughout Sealand to market its services. It currently does not have a mobile app. And I think yesterday when we was reading the questions, there was a question asking for uh, the benefits of the mobile technology. So at the back of the mind, you should now know that this company currently does not have a mobile app. So what benefits the company can have of the use of the mobile technology? Now, if you get something like information like such, and you know I've, I, there is a requirement relating to mobile application. So I will copy this requirement, control C. I'll go back to my word processor and I'll see where was the question. Uh, question number three A, discuss the benefits of mobile technology to market and deliver its service. Now I can dump this information here while I'm reading the exhibit and I'll dump the information here, which I will delete later when I'm writing the answer. Number one, it currently does not have a mobile app. Now, one hour later, when I come down on my word processor, will this information help me in drafting the answer for use of mobile technology? So currently the company does not have a mobile technology. If they have, what benefit will they be having, right? So try dumping any information you get into the word file. Now, I think I got some information about customer segmentation. They have 230 members. One, I take it back to my word processor. Uh, assess the value uh, of undertaking customer segmentation. So in customer segmentation, currently they have 230 members. Let's go back to the task overview exhibit. Uh, they run swimming lessons for children. That's one more segmentation. So number two, run swimming classes for children. Okay, let's go back where we were. Uh, I'm reading this paragraph while, while Optima is a well uh, respected provider in the fitness and leisure club industry, it is increasingly facing challenges in the market. The board is currently in the process of evaluating its market position and its strategic options to grow the business, right? So I think customer segmentation would help them uh, with that strengthening of market or customer segmentation would help them with uh, its market position because they can serve the needs of the customer better. So I, I believe this can help us in determining the value the board is currently in the process of evaluating its market position and its strategic options to grow the business. So uh, this can be taken as a, a sentence which can help us in drafting the value to Optima of undertaking a customer segmentation. Okay, this is one line from here, yellow. 
It is also assessing how it can ensure it clubs operate as efficiently and effectively as possible. I, I hope if you know our members well, we know the behaviors and temperaments and attitudes and lifestyles, age, gender of our members very well. It, it can help us in, in effectively managing the club, right? So I, I hope customer segmentations can help us in effective and efficient management of the club if you know the needs of the customer. So I think this is an important line which can be brought in. And uh, let's read the last line. So while you're reading exhibit, if you get a certain sentence which links with requirement one, two, three, four, you will keep dumping that into the respective requirement. Is everyone understanding that? Because in, in, in a webinar, I can just demonstrate that in a summarized manner. But at least I dumped something about mobile application and I dumped something about customer segmentation while reading through. Now comes the last line. You are a senior corporate business analyst. So who you are? Senior corporate business analyst. Control C. So we are... Sorry, just one minute. We are a senior corporate business analysis and we need to write a briefing note to the finance director. So senior corporate business an analyst is what you are. You assist uh, working for Optima and you report directly to the finance director, right? So that's what you are. And you assist him in preparing information for the strategic level activities. You should assume it is September 2021, right? So you're assuming it's September 2021 if you want to write a date somewhere. Okay, now from the first case, let's go back and see the task. In the first task, we need to write a briefing note to the finance director, right? So when we are writing a briefing note to the finance director, how we start with in the exam? Answer. FAO for the attention of, for the attention of the finance director from, who is writing the briefing note? Uh, senior corporate business analyst. If we have names, we can put the names, but currently I cannot see the names. It's from the senior corporate business analyst. And if you want to put the date, you can, but normally we don't put dates. Uh, you directly come down to briefing note, briefing notes, colon, uh, briefing note, colon. It's like subject, right? What's the subject of the briefing note? So briefing note, colon, uh, customer segmentation. That's, that's the subject we're writing the briefing note for, right? Customer segmentation. Now that's, that's how you formulate uh, a briefing note. FAO for the attention of the person you're writing to. I hope you're clear with that. From who you are and briefing note, colon, the subject. So you put the subject. Now, directly, uh, you come down writing the answer under the briefing note. You put the first heading, customer segmentation. It's customer segmentation, value to Optima. And you put the next heading, uh, ways to segment customer. Ways to segment customer. That's how you go down. There is no conclusion, right, of a briefing note. But because this question is asking us to assess so we will give a conclusion at the end. Assess. So we give a conclusion. Otherwise, there is no conclusion of a briefing note. But because the requirement is asking us to assess, we will give a conclusion. Is everyone clear with the format of the briefing note? Right. So let me just copy this format from here and take it to my... Uh, word file and now I'll just stick to my word file. I'll come back and back again to the practice platform just to give you a confidence booster that we are using the practice platform. Answer. Task 1A. Uh, FAO means for the attention of. For the attention of, right? For the attention of. I hope you're clear with that, right? And that's how you write in the exam paper, F-A-O. You don't write the full form, right? Okay, task 1A. Now, that's what we got from the task 1A. Briefing note. Just let me take the task 1A down. Answer. F-A-O from briefing notes. That's how we start writing the answer. 
Okay, we have customer segmentation as the first part A. And then we had the second part B. Task 1A and task one, sorry, it's just like one and two, not one A and one B. It's just like one and two. So two things to be done in the briefing note, right? I hope you all agree. And then we have the ways to segment customers. And finally, we have a conclusion at the end of the briefing note. Why are we writing the conclusion at the end of the briefing note? Because there is one requirement asking us to assess. Do we write conclusion in the briefing note? Do we write conclusion in the briefing notes? No. But why are we writing here? Because the requirement is to assess. Uh, if you want to give an introduction uh, at the start of the briefing note, uh, fresher, you can give that. But again, the introduction of a briefing note will be very concise as compared to the introduction of writing a report. Because you need to understand a briefing note is a concise writing versus the report. Briefing note is shorter, report is lengthy. So just try to ensure that even if you're writing an introduction at the start of a briefing note, fresher, it should just be like one sentence. I, I'll, I'll show you when I'm writing, if you want to write an introduction uh, in the briefing note, right? Okay, let's go down. Now let's start writing the answer. We got something uh, from the case study that they had 230 members and uh, they had they run swimming classes. Uh, they do uh, want their market position to strengthen and they do want the business to grow and they do want the club to operate its operation in an effective and efficient. And I believe this is a value. Market position can be a value. Uh, operating effectively and efficiently can be a value which can be linked to the case study because that's exactly what the board want at the end of the day. Right now, they have 230,000 members. So you need to segmentize them. How? Examiner is asking you the ways to segmentize. Now, look at one thing. This is a surprise vector we have in the webinar today. And that will really help you uh, formulate answers for every task you have in the September, December 21 paper. Let me go back to the uh, articles. Can you see the articles in front of your screen? by uh, the SPL articles. Okay, if you can see the uh, articles in front of your screens, I hope you can all see that, the articles. You go down and uh, you go down to the syllabus area C because uh, customer segmentation is part of syllabus area C. So you click on C and you reach the articles. Now, can you see this very first article of the examiner? It says the article focuses on the nature and importance of market and customer segmentation, an aspect of strategic analysis, which is covered within section C of the SPL syllabus. Now, if you have not read examiner articles, which I've emphasized on my day one of the webinar, and a topic from the examiner article comes in the exam paper, just like customer segmentation came in September 21 exams. What will you do? Now, you, you cannot blame anyone. You have to blame yourself because these articles are made for students and are to be read by students. And this is an article on market segmentations and customer segmentation. An examiner did cover this in the context of September, December 21 paper. Just let me open this article for you for a minute just to guide you how critical reading articles are. You go down this article and it tells you about market segmentation and customer segmentation, right? And it goes down and tells you why is market segmentation important? And then you go down, then it says market segmentation versus customer segmentation. Can you see this here? I think one of the student was asking me a question, uh, Ellen, I guess, uh, market segmentation versus customer segmentation. So. It says market segmentation involves splitting a market into segments and developing different strategies for the segment. For example, this, 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 and this. Now look at this. Customer segmentation is the same basic idea, just like market segmentation, except that the scope is limited to the organization own customers. So market is a broad scope, right? Customer is a narrow scope. 
customer is a narrow scope. So market segmentation, customer segmentation. <coughs> Typically, customer segmentations are based on data held in the organization internal database. Now, how many members we have as Optima? 230,000 members. Now, we must be knowing about their age, right? We must be knowing about their gender, right? We must be knowing about their nationalities, we must be knowing about their uh, lifestyles a bit. We must be knowing about in which area of sea land are they living in? Are they living in a very posh area? If they're living in a very posh area, they might be having a very posh lifestyle, etc. So uh, Optima must be having a database of 230,000 members, right or wrong? They must be having it, right? Customer segmentation involve breaking down an organization customers market into homogeneous groups, each of which will be different for pricing, promotions, and other elements. Now, when we segmentize customer, will it be easier to interact with them? Because every group of customer will be different. Some like quality, some like price, some like swimming pool, some like tennis courts, some like gym facilities, some like to come in the morning, some like to come in the evening, some like to come on the weekends. Because every group is different in terms of their characteristics. So we need to break the customers into different groups according to their similar characteristics and then use the marketing mix effectively. So what is the value of customer segmentation? A better utilization of marketing mix price price promotion price and promotion right that's that's one of the benefit now you go down and it says types of market segmentation and types of customer segmentation are the same age gender the martial status income occupation nationality ethnic group so that's that's how you divide them now what's the question asking us ways ways to segmentize customer in the second requirement. So what is one way to segmentize customer? What is one way to segmentize customer? Demographic. But you have to link this to Optima. Can, can we use headings from the knowledge part? Yes. But can the headings be adapted to Optima? So demographic is age or demographic is nationality or demographic is ethnic. But can we then link demographic to Optima? Yes. And we get marks. Second, behavioral. Now, behavioral is a knowledge that one of the segmentation is behavioral, but can we link behavioral to Optima? Habits. Then next, geographic. Geographic cannot be done for uh, geographic. And lastly, psychographic, social status. You, diff you have 230,000 members they, they will be having different social backgrounds. Some will be elite, posh. Some will be middle class. Personalities. Some will have very, uh, very, uh, we, we do have different personalities, right? Even if we are a member of a club, every member of a club have a different personality. Some are very simple. Some are very fashion oriented. They have different types of personalities and lifestyles. So we can classify the 230,000 members on the basis of the psychographic uh, ways as well. And you go down, look at this benefits of market segmentation. Value, value to uh, value of customer segmentation. Satisfy customer needs, one. So what is the value of customer segmentation? Satisfy customer need, control C, and I take it back to my Word file. What is the value to Optima of undertaking customer segmentation analysis. Now, one of the value is, for example, I'm writing my answer. I'll say one of the value is satisfy customer need. Second value is targeted communication. We can have a better targeted communication. Number two. Number three, value of customer segmentation is Improve focus, improve focus, and you take it back to the word file, improve focus. Go back to the article 
Another benefit of customer segmentation, another value of customer segmentation is improved competitiveness. Is that, is that what the uh, uh, Optima is looking for? Uh, improving market position, improving market position. That's, that's what the director was looking for, right? Improve competitiveness, control C. You go back and you put this over here. Next, fourth. Let's see, is there any other in the article? Yes, improve market efficiency. Is, is, are they looking for uh, efficiency and effectiveness of the club operation? Efficiency. And the next, customer retention. How many points we need to write? We just had a 12 marks answer. Where we need to write six points divided into part one and part two. Already we have like six points just in the part one. But I want to discuss something very critical with you. Uh, now, let's come back to the word file. Now, listen to me for five minutes uh, and just uh, move away from the chat box. If any student prior to entering the September, December 21 paper had read the article on market segmentation written by the examining team, he or she must be knowing the, the, the benefits of customer segmentation, which is right here, right? Now, knowledge is important. We say rote learning is irrelevant for SPL, but we never say knowledge is irrelevant for SPL. Knowledge is relevant. If, if the question asks you, what are benefits of data analytics? You should know that, but you should then link them with the case study. You should then sync them with the case study. Satisfy customer need. That is just a heading. But if I link satisfy customer need with Optima, will that be good? But if I just copy paste the paragraph of the examiner article, satisfy customer need, will that be bad? Where will I get the professional marks? Satisfy customer needs, copy paste the examiner article paragraph or link this with Optima. Where will I get my professional marks? So if the question is asking you drawbacks, or if the question is asking you benefits, should you learn those benefits from the book or from the article? And in the exam, you just tailor them to the case study. You just adapt them to the case study. Is, are you getting my point? Just, just look at one example. Just look at one example. Suppose my first heading is satisfy customer need. I, I've not read exhibit two, three, four, five, six. I'm just showing you something, right? There must be, you need to read all the exhibits, right? Before you write the answer. But just, just listen to me. Satisfy customer need. Suppose that's the first. Assess the value of customer segmentation to Optima. That's what we need to do, right? So satisfy customer need. See what I write under. If Optima segmentize its customers, if Optima segmentize its customers, which currently are 230,000 club members. Have I linked that to the case study now? If Optima segmentize its customer, which currently are 230,000 club members, it will benefit Optima to satisfy the needs of each group of club members because each group of club members will be having a unique set of demands a unique set of demands and needs for a stop. Now, if Optima segmentize its customer, which are currently the 230,000 club members, it will benefit Optima to satisfy the needs of each of the member because each group of member will be having a unique set of demands and needs. And by satisfying uh, each, uh, by satisfying demands of each 
group of members, Optima can gain members loyalty and retention. See, I clap two points together, two sentences. A good paragraph is two to three sentences long. Have I written two sentences? Can you see two full stop in my answer? Write one. Now, if I write satisfy customer need and there is no Optima in my answer, there is no 230,000 member in my answer, is that an illogical answer? Now tell me, is my heading, is my knowledge linked to Optima? Satisfy customer need is a knowledge, but have I tailored satisfy customer need to the case study? Is, is that commercial acumen? Is that showing awareness of the value to Optima? Showing, demonstrating awareness of the value to Optima, three marks. I hope you're getting it. Let's, let's look at next, next one. Again, please, you have to read all the exhibits. In the limitation of the webinar, I'm just trying to tell you um, the better way to write an answer and not going down into exhibits. There must be a lot of information in the exhibit which will change the answer you write after the end of the day three. But I just want to show you the way you write. See, there are so many other points. Improve focus, improve competitiveness. That's important. If, if I just write the point, improve competitiveness, because that was linked to the case study. Uh, the board of directors, the board of directors at Optima are currently concerned uh, with the protection, uh, with the protection uh, of, with the protection and strengthening of Optima market position or share. I hope we saw that from the case study. Uh, I even copied that here, right? When I was reading the case study. Um, the board is currently in the process of evaluating its market position and its strategic options to grow the business, right? So they, 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 they want the market position to strengthen and, and they want the business to grow. So. The board of directors at Optima are currently concerned with the protection and, and strengthening of Optima market position and share. And this can be achieved if Optima, if Optima do perform customer segmentation uh, as by customer segmentations because the customer segmentation uh, will help Optima to understand their members in a better manner and will help Optima to build good relationships with them, good relationships with them by customizing by customizing their services as per the need of each member group full stop L look at this sentence and just read it for once the board of directors at Optima are currently concerned with protecting the market share and even strengthening that. And this can be achieved if Optima do perform customer segmentations because customer segmentation will help Optima to understand their members in a better, in a better manner, sorry. That sets the benefit of reading, uh, proofreading. Better manner and will help Optima to build relationships with them by customizing service. So if you customize services, will that result in a better relationship? Will the members be happy if you give them customized services? Relationship, customizing services, understanding the members, sorry, understanding the members, will that help them build a better repute, better relationship? And will better relationship help in uh, improving the market share? 
see, I, I've not read exhibit two, three, four, five, six. There must be some numerical figures or some uh, facts which you can bring into your answer. But just by reading the exhibit one, am I writing an answer which do demonstrate this? Look at this, what the examiner wants from us. Just read this yellow sentence we were reading yesterday. Demonstrating commercial acumen in showing awareness of the usefulness to Optima. So each of the paragraph I wrote, was it showing awareness of the value to Optima or not? Was my, is my sentence meeting commercial acumen or not? So if you know what to demonstrate and you know how to demonstrate and you know that I need to link the usefulness to Optima to get my three extra marks. So am I linking this to the Optima? But one student in the exam paper goes back to the examiner article and says, okay, um, improve focus, copy, control C. He learns this, he learns this. He's a good road learn student. He learns improve focus. And in the exam, he gets a question on customer segmentation. Uh, improve focus and you copy paste improve focus right this see this improve focus i just copied it from the examiner article here right here read read improve focus here please all of you and tell me is it showing awareness of the value to optima tell me read read this box in red and show me where you have written a paragraph you have wasted your time and are you getting any marks on it? Read and tell me. This is just a copy paste from the examiner article, what improved focus means. Is there any relevance to Optima? Is there any, any usage of Optima? Is there any linkage to Optima? No. So, if you know the heading, that is good. Uh, what are benefits of integrated reporting? You should know that. What are benefits of mobile technology? You should know that. What are benefits of data and analytics? You should know that. There are so many benefits the examiner asks for you uh, by for, from you, right, in the SPL paper. If you've, if you've uh, solved the past papers, so many times in the past paper, you must have come across benefits, 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 benefits. What is the source of benefits, knowledge? But the knowledge has to be adapted to be successful. But if you're just taking a rote learn knowledge and you are just reproducing the rote learn knowledge, it's of no use. Is, is everyone clear? Is everyone clear? I'm just deleting this paragraph, else you will get con confused. So every heading you write, should that be linked to Optima? Right, last point, and we're exiting from it. Marketing efficiency, improve marketing efficiency. Were they concerned about, uh, it is also assessing how it can ensure that the club operates as efficiently and as effectively as possible. Were they concerned about it? So improve marketing efficiency. Optima, board of directors, are currently concerned about improving uh, club effective uh, club efficiency. Just let me read that statement again. Uh, operates as effectively and efficiently as possible. Optima board of directors are currently concerned about improving uh, the club efficiency in terms of its operations and if customers are segmentized if customers are segmentized it will help optima in marketing uh, in marketing the customers in the right manner and the uh, expenditure 
and the expenditure on marketing uh, will will not go waste if one marketing campaign is run for all members because each member will have a different need each group of members sorry not each each group of members will have a different need and if marketing is tailored if marketing is tailored to the needs of the group it will be a more efficient marketing and more efficient marketing in terms of cost benefit analysis commercial acumen if i if i make one marketing campaign and run it right for example uh, i am running a marketing campaign for my for my spl students and I, I i just make one marketing campaign and i run it for all spl students that admissions are open that would be waste of money for me but if i segmentize my spl students into fresh students giving spl for the first time uh, students who have flunk in SBL uh, for like two attempts and three attempts and already under a lot of financial burden or an SBL student who has flunked only once. Now, will that help me um, market them in an effective manner like a group, like offering some incentives and discounts to the students who have flunked more or offering some uh, reset classes or some short courses instead of offering a full course to everyone. So is, is that a cost benefit analysis to segmentize customers and then tailor your marketing accordingly? Will, will that bring the marketing efficiency? So if I spend $100 on marketing and I just do one marketing for all, is that more beneficial? Or if I split my budget into $50 and $50, for $50, I target the fresh customers and for $50, I target the flung customers. Is, is that more efficient marketing? So are you understanding the point I wrote, number three? Optima board is currently concerned about improving the club efficiency in terms of its operation. And if customers are segmentized, it will help optimize marketing the customers in the right manner. And the expenditure will not go waste. If one marketing campaign is run for all members, because each group of member will have a different needs. And if the marketing is tailored to the needs of the group, it will be more efficient marketing in terms of cost benefit analysis. E efficiency, right? So this is how you write the answer. Now tell me, are you all clear with what exactly it means to demonstrate awareness of the usefulness in the context of Optima? Again, I'm saying you have to read all exhibits because your answer will change if you read all exhibits because more information will be available and more information can be related to Optima. Currently, I'm just relating the information I had in the first uh, exhibit. Is that clear to all of you? Now, honestly, tell me, have I demonstrated this? Have I demonstrated this? Honestly, tell me. Have I demonstrated this? Read the sentence and tell me, has it been demonstrated? Waiting for your answers. Right. So sh now let's sum up and get to the next requirement. Just let me sum up this and let's get to the next requirement because uh, we need to formulate other ways to segment customers and other requirements as well. You need to write a conclusion. But before we write that out, just listen to me very carefully. Uh, a student note, because I, I'll be giving you a lot of notes today, because that's the only way uh, you can uh, be successful in the upcoming exam setting. So listen to these student notes very, very carefully. Now, one of the student notes, which I just discussed with you is, <clears throat> 
knowledge alone is useless for SBL paper. That's one, which we say rote learning, right? That's, that's useless. Now, what is important for SPL? Knowledge is important for SBL if the knowledge is adapted to the situation, circumstances, or the environment presented in the case study. So, for example, a student should know the Porter Diamond headings or the, the benefits of integrated reporting or the benefits of uh, CSR, but the student need to tailor the benefits in context of the case study to fetch two marks per valid point for a stop. So have I demonstrated that? I read the examiner article on customer segmentation. From that examiner article, I picked up the headings, I dumped the headings, and I, can, I linked every heading with Optima. So a student should know knowledge, right? You cannot go to the SBL paper without knowledge. And the best source of knowledge is examiner articles. More important than the book reading. So because examining team will be setting a paper, looking at what articles are available on the website, right? They will also be looking at the syllabus areas, right? And there is a possibility that they've not written an article on a certain area, which is tested. So in that case, you need the book reading. But is everyone clear with the student note? Is everyone clear how to go about with the student note? Should we move on? Okay, that's, that's exactly what you should be looking at. Okay, that ends the story number one. Let's go to the story number two. The story number two is ways to segment customers. Now we know the ways again, right? We just need to link them with, with, with Optima that what are ways to segment customers? Let's go back to the article. How many ways we had? Number one, we had demographic, control C. You bring it back to the word file. This is the first way, demographic, number one. You go back again, you copy behavioral, control C, you bring it back. Here, number three, you take geographic and psychographic. We need three, right? We just need three. So I'm just taking uh, three of them. You can take geographical as well. Uh, I think they, they, there is no need of a geographical for uh, Optima because they're just in sea land, right? So there is no need for geographical uh, in uh, sea land, right? Uh, are they operating in multiple cities? No, they're just operating in one country, sea land. So do they need geographical segmentations of customers? No, because they're not operating in any other country. So in the exam, if you mistakenly pick geographical for Optima, that would be wrong. Agree, disagree. So they're just operating in sea land, right? Okay, psychographic. Now you brought them here. Now in the exam, if you know what they are, you just need to link them to the case study, right? So just put headings here uh, and you just translate them into a quick answer. I'll just be demonstrating one and you will be linking them uh, accordingly as your work at home. Just give me one minute to uh, satisfy 
the okay demographic now the first one uh, optima ways to segment customer just just let me read the requirement uh, carefully the requirement was advice on the most appropriate ways that optima could segment its customers in order to target them more effectively okay the most appropriate ways for optima to segment its customer in order to target them effectively okay so the most appropriate way number one is uh, optima should uh segment it's 230000 club members uh on the basis of uh, demo uh, on uh, on a demographic basis which includes uh classifying the members on the basis of age, gender, uh, ethnicity, uh, etc. Now, when you will read the case, uh, let me show you that for the safe side, because uh, at times the students are reluctant uh, doing something which the tutor is not guiding them. Uh, if I just open the exhibit number two for you on the screen, just to show you one thing. Uh, no, I think that's in the exhibit number three. Exhibit number three. See this in the exhibit number three. Can you see childcare facilities? Uh, a wide range of fitness activities for uh, after school exercise for six to 18 years, fitness sessions for over 65 years, uh, individual, couples, families over 65, individuals, couples, family, slash over 65 years. So how many types of demographic, uh, how, in, in what ways can they demographically do it? Individuals, couples, families, over 65, 6 to 18. So can we link them to the case study, right? So I, will it be important for Optima to know uh, to do this? So you can link this to case study now. So Optima should segment its 230,000 club members on a demographic basis, which includes classifying members on the basis of age, gender, ethnicity. Uh, Optima uh, will benefit from this, uh, sorry, Optima will classify uh, its members on the basis uh, of couples, comma, families, uh, individuals uh, over the age of 65 years, or children uh, in the bracket of 6 to 18, full stop. So you, you, you link that demographic part to what is exactly happening in the case study. So the question was asking is, what is the best ways to uh, for Optima to segment its customer in order to target them more effectively? So if uh, members are uh, members are demographically uh, divided by Optima, uh, it will help Optima later to cater to their needs in a more appropriate manner. Full stop. Don't, don't start to write something which uh, relates with the part A answer value to Optima. So you cannot have an overlapping answer, right? So I, I tried restraining myself from the, uh, from the value to Optima. I just focused more on the demographic segmentation that this is the most appropriate way. Then you have behavioral. You put a sentence what behavioral is and you link that to 
Optima. Then you put what psychographic is. You just explain exactly what psychographic is in like one sentence. You can take that information from here. That psychographic is about social status and personalities. And then they should break the, the members into different social status uh, and personality classifications uh, in, the, in the bracket of 230,000 members, so on and so forth. Obviously, the couples will have a different personalities. The people with age of 65 plus will have a different personality. The children in 6 to 18 brackets will have a different personality and so on and so forth. And, and the social status will be different of the couples and of the people age 65 plus uh, will have definitely different lifestyles and social status. So you need to break them down as well. Are you clear? Are you on track? What to be done? So is knowledge important or is it not important? Is knowledge important? It is, right? Is knowledge important, right? It is. Now, conclusion. Are we giving a conclusion? Because one of the requirements was asking us to assess the value to Optima, right? So in a conclusion, you simply say, uh, thus, uh, it, thus Optima can have a lot of value addition uh, if customers are segmentized. The op thus Optima can have a lot of value addition if customers are segmentized because uh, Optima will gain, uh, will gain uh, customer loyalty, will gain customer loyalty will gain customer loyalty, retention, and reputation by better serving, by better serving members, uh, by better serving members' demands. So thus Optima can, can have a lot of value addition if customers are segmentized because Optima will gain customer loyalty, retention, reputation by better serving customer demands, which will translate into, uh, into more competitive position of Optima in the leisure industry. So you will have a more competitive looking Optima in the leisure industry. And that's it. That's exactly what the directors are looking for. So your conclusion has to be just as short as this. You are not repeating any point. You're just concluding. And market share can be retained, right? Uh, you Just one minute, sorry. Uh, I just shared my WhatsApp number with you. If you want uh, me, you to be added to the WhatsApp group, please uh, WhatsApp me so I'll add you up after the session today. Okay. Is, are you satisfied with what we just discussed in task 1A? Uh, have you learned something out of it? The structure of the briefing node, giving a conclusion because the requirement was asking for assess, uh, linking the examiner article with the case study, uh, ensuring that we gain most of the uh, professional skill marks, etc. So have you benefited from how we read yesterday, how we planned yesterday and how we wrote yesterday? Okay, that's great. Let's just quickly move on to the next requirement. We have another requirement uh, from this task 1A. Uh, let's go back to the uh, platform. I hope you can all see the platform in front of your screen. We have the task 1 and we have the second task now, 1B. Prepare two presentation slides, right? with accompanying notes. Now, I need to guide you a lot about this before I come to the examiner criticism. Uh, I'll take the examiner criticism of the entire task one after completing the entire task one for 28 marks, right? So after we complete the 28 marks, we go to the examiner report and we start reading the examiner report, right? The finance director has asked for your assistance in drafting the presentation, preparing two presentation slides with accompanying notes, which explain why it is of strategic importance to Optima to demonstrate a strong focus on CSR for its customer and staff and for its wider stakeholder. 10 marks 
Professional skill marks are available for demonstrating communication skill in concisely informing the board uh, of the strategic importance, right? So control C, uh, though we discussed this yesterday, but I need now to write the answer. I'll be writing the answer on the slides, not uh, on the word processor, but I just need to prepare my answer on the word processor before I come back here. Okay, uh, let's go down with task 1B. I hope you can see the support file back on screen. Let's start to write the answer. Task 1B, control C. So this is the task 1B now on the screen. We just need to quickly spend two minutes on it and start writing the answer because we already discussed about it yesterday, what exactly is to be done. So I'm not wasting any time on it. Okay, prepare two slides, right? We will be preparing that on the platform with accompanying notes. So I'll be showing you how to go down with it and find with it why it is of strategic importance to Optima to demonstrate a strong focus on CSR. Why it is of strategic importance to Optima to demonstrate a strong CSR for its customer and staff and why it is of strategic importance to Optima to demonstrate a strong CSR for its wider stakeholder. So we know we had marks allocation for this yesterday uh, for its customer and staff and for its wider stakeholders. We'll keep five marks for the first one. We'll keep the five marks for the second one. So that means on every slide, uh, we will have three points divided by two, is equal to three points and divided by two is equal to three points. And what three points should be? Why it is of strategic importance to Optima to demonstrate CSR for its customer and for its staff and for the wider stakeholder, right? Demonstrating communication skill in concisely informing the board of the importance, concisely. So if we concisely inform, we'll get marks. Let's go back to the case study and start writing the answer. I hope you can see the slides in front of your screen now. So what heading should I give on my first slide? Customer and is, is the slides visible to all of you? And can you see that? Is it, uh, is it uh, I, I hope the size of the slides are good enough, right? Okay, customer and staff, first slide, then the speaker notes and the slide two is wider stakeholder and the speaker note, right? Uh, on the slide, we put the bullets and on the accompanying notes, we do the commentary. So what is the, uh, what is the strategic importance to Optima for doing CSR for its customer and staff? Uh, will, that, will that result in customer retentions if they do CSR? Like something like this, customer retention, link that to the case study, uh, staff uh, loyalty or staff retention staff uh, loyalty or staff commitment. The staff will be more committed if, uh, if, you are, if you are doing CSR for staff, if you are providing them a good working environment or any such help, any such support, which is beyond a salary. Uh, even if you're doing CSR for, uh, for the customers, we'll see what sort of CSR are they doing. Uh, that will really benefit uh, the uh, customer's retention and customer loyalty, right? Um, and another third point, just as I go back to the case study and see, do we get any help from the case study? Okay. Can, can you see the platform in front of you? Okay. Can you see the exhibit three? Uh, in the exhibit three, uh, they're telling us something about their customers, staff, and wider stakeholders. Let's, let's read that quickly. Uh, we employ about 25,000 people. So that's, that's basically the staff. So they have 25,000 people, number one, uh, including an expert and highly trained team of 1,200 fitness instructors, 
and more than 200 professional tennis coaches. Now, is it important to retain them because uh, it, they are highly trained and they are the one which offer services to the members? Uh, 1,200 fitness instructors and 200 professional tennis coaches. If there is a turnover in the tennis coaches or if there is a turnover in the fitness instructor, will, will the members be dissatisfied? Uh, every day they come to the club and they find a new instructor. They find a new coach. Uh, will they be happy looking at the same coach again and again uh, with which they have familiarity and relationship uh, who have who must have helped them in the initial classes of swimming and coachings and tennis and etc. So retention of these 2,500 people is important for the satisfaction of the customers. Or do you want to have a very high staff turnover? So control C, I'll see if I can develop a point around 2,500 people on my slides. Uh, customer retention, uh, in my uh, speaker notes, I'm pasting the information. Let's see how I utilize this information later. So if I find any relevant information, I'll just paste that in my speaker notes. Next. Across our club, we offer 5,000 exercise classes every week. Our facilities are unrivaled with 500 top class tennis courts and 100 swimming pools. Every week, our 10,000 children's uh, every week, over 10,000 children learn to swim and over 2,000 adult and children learn to play tennis at our clubs. We offer member lounges, eating and relaxation area. See, they're caring about their customers. They're, they're trying to facilitate their customers as much as possible, whether they are children, they are adults, they are families, they are couples. They, they want them to be, they want best of the services to be offered to them which is not possible without the staff. If your staff is demotivated, if your staff is uh, not satisfied, your staff will not be working on a 100% capacity and that will not be resulting in the best services to the members. So I think staff and customers are connected together. Agree or disagree? We move on. At Optima Fitness and Leisure Club, we have it all. Whether you want to get fit, be healthy, reach your performance goal, learn a new skill, or simply have a fun and socialize, we have something to offer to you. So you, they, they are, they're telling the customer that we offer you everything, fun, socializing, getting fit, getting healthy, etc. So we're offering you all sort of things in our leisure club. We're offering them flexible memberships. We're offering them world-class facilities. We're offering them tennis and swimming. We're offering them something for all ages. And then you go down. Can you see this? Corporate social responsibility, healthy society. Now, this will help us formulate most of our answer. We recognize the importance of our role in contributing to a healthy society. So is, is Optima doing CSR currently? Yes. And the question is asking us, why it is of importance to Optima to do CSR for its customer and staff. Agree, disagree. Why it is of strategic importance to Optima to do CSR for its wider stakeholders, right? So we recognize the importance. So are they recognizing how important CSR is as a company? Yes. We aim to provide the best facilities. That's, that's, a, a, that's like a social responsibility towards customer innovation. And, and classes and unrivaled expertise for our members. Our aim is to motivate people to maximize their potential and achieve goal, motivate people. So they want people motivations. Uh, they want uh, unrivaled expertise for our members. So they're giving unrivaled services to their members. They're motivating people. Uh, in, in the wider community, we positively encourage the development of our relationship between our clubs and the local groups and institutions. So they positively engage with local community. They positively indulge in activities with local community, local groups and institutions. So they're trying building relationship with the local communities. This include using our expertise to inspire the wider community uh, through working within schools and with elderly people. So they, they do a lot of uh, activities in schools to engage the local community. 
and they do a lot of activities with elderly people in different parts of Sealand. So they're engaging with the school people, uh, they're engaging with the elderly peoples as part of their commitment to the wider community. In the last five years, uh, we have organized many events to raise money for local charities. So that's wider community, uh, raising money for the local charity. So that's part of the wider community. And we have invested some of our profit into international initiatives to improve the health and well-being of children. So they've also put money, uh, they've, they've put some part of the profit uh, to the international initiatives to health for the health and well-being of the children across the world. So they are doing CSR. That means they realize how strategically important it is to do CSR. It, that means Optima knows the benefit of CSR. Agree, disagree, tell me. If a company is doing CSR, does the company realize the importance of CSR? That's, that's the reason they're doing it. Uh, will, will Optima directors be sure they're getting some benefit out of the CSR? That's the reason they're doing it. So Optima directors are doing CSR because they know there is a benefit of it. Can they, can they retain their customers? Can they have customer loyalty? Can they have a better reputation, et cetera? It's a listed company. So can they attract more investors coming to their company? Can they have a better share prices? So reputation, sorry, staff uh, market share, market share. Uh, in terms of the wider, wider stakeholders, Point number one, uh, better, uh, sorry, investor, investor attraction. If they're doing CSR, the investors will be attracted to them. Investor attractions to invest in Optima. So investors will be attracted to invest in Optima as a first importance, strategic importance. Uh, reputation, they will have a better reputation among the wider community and that will help them with the share prices, reputation, and you can write another point, wider stakeholder, and that will help them uh, with something else. You just fill in the answer, right? But that's the way you write a slide. Slides are written in bullets. Customer and staff, importance of CSR. That's the heading of the slide and you wrote the three. The next, wider stakeholders, importance of CSR. So on the slides, you just put what? The bullets, are you all clear? And now you write the accompanying notes. Now you write the accompanying notes, right? Why it is strategically important for uh, Optima to do CSR for its customer and staff. What benefits are they getting out of it at the end of the day? No company do CSR without benefits, right? You do CSR for benefits. Now, again, the shortage of time in the webinar, uh, we just read one exhibit, which was the exhibit number three, but you should also read other exhibits. I think there is an exhibit, uh, exhibit number five, and the exhibit number five is about social responsibility. So please ensure, you do also read the exhibit number five, which is about social responsibility before you formulate an answer. In the limitation, I'm reading one exhibit, but you should read even the exhibit number five because it do provides information about uh, CSR relating to the leisure industry. So this is a newspaper article and this newspaper article is telling us about the leisure industry doing CSR and why. It can help you formulate an answer. Okay, let's write an answer. Customer and staff, Importance of CSR. Now, the first one. Uh, it, I'm writing my notes, right? So notes are written without headings. Just change of paragraph. Customer retention, my first paragraph in the speaker note. Uh, it will be strategically important. It will be strategically important for Optima to... Uh, it, it will be strategically important for Optima to indulge in CSR activities as they are currently, as they're currently doing, because this will help them in their members' retention 
this will help them in their members retention and loyalty uh, as optima is providing them unrivaled services as optima is providing them unrivaled services and best possible options to enjoy the club facilities enjoy the club facilities right it will be strategically important for optima to indulge in csr activities as they're currently doing it because this will help them uh, it will help them in their members retention uh, and loyalty as optimized providing them unrivaled services and best possible options to enjoy the club membership. Second, staff loyalty. Optima uh, engages 2,500 staff members, uh, which provides uh, support in form of coaching, uh, in form of coaching and in form of coaching and as fitness instructors and as fitness instructors for uh, facilitating the club members. Optima engages 2,500 staff which provides support in form of coaching as well as fitness instructor for facilitating club members. Um, the, uh, the CSR activities uh, for staff members undertaken by Optima will benefit in terms of staff motivation and in lowering staff turnover and in lowering staff turnover and building staff retention which will uh, be of satisfaction to club members as they would not like to see staff being changed frequently. So the club members would not like the staff to be changed frequently, right? So if Optima is doing CSR for their staff, which they are, you can read that from the exhibit number five. It will definitely motivate the staff. The staff will be happy to work in Optima. They will not be leaving Optima. They will be less turnover and things will be happy. So if, if the staff continue for a longer term, the members will be happy because the members will be engaging with the same staff and so on and so forth. Are you clear? So uh, in the speaker note, you just change the paragraph. So my first paragraph is for my customer retention. My second paragraph is for the staff loyalty. Your third can be for the market share. But in the speaker notes, you don't use headings, right? But in the slide, you use the headings just like this. Is everyone clear with the formulation of slides and speaker notes? But it has to be concise, right? Already look at the slide bullets. It's already a concise communication. And even when you're writing a speaker note, ensure each speaker note is not more than two sentences long. It should not be more than two sentences long. See, I, I just wrote this point here. I had one full, sorry, I had one full stop and I had a second full stop. So I only two sentences long, right? Not three or four sentences long when you're writing a speaker note. Okay, just let me take things back to the Word file for a final recap. Uh, okay, student note, student note. And we are going to examine a criticism because that is extremely important. Student note, number one, while preparing, while uh, preparing slides in the uh, in the workspace, in the response option. Ensure 
that on slides only bullets are used only bullets are used in the accompanying notes in the accompanying notes or the slide notes after each slide you will do the commentary you will do the commentary for each bullet put in slide which should not be more than two sentences long as the examiner want you to demonstrate communication skill in communication skill in concisely informing in concisely informing the board so that's the key right why are we writing two sentences long because we need to meet the professional marks if we don't had communication skill we could have written three to four sentences because the maximum length is four sentences right but why are we writing two sentences because we have to meet the requirement of the professional marks as well which says you need to demonstrate communication skills uh, in concisely informing the board so that's the reason i'm just telling you keep not more than two sentences long that's the reason otherwise what's the maximum length of an answer in sbl maximum four sentences long that's the maximum length right right clear so that's another important student note for the requirement now i hope in the last hour or so while uh i was discussing things with you uh we just interacted on the question number 1 you can see the examiner report on your screen now can all of you see the examiner report on your screen okay great now <clears throat> we were just interacting on the question number 1a and 1b where where we have to make a briefing note and then a slide we had commercial acumen and we had communication skill we just read briefly over exhibit 1 and a bit of exhibit 3 but again again and again i'm saying you have to read all exhibits before you start writing answer because there could be an information in a later exhibit which can be helpful for csr or there could be an information in the later exhibit for customer segmentation which can be beneficial so when you read all the eight exhibits and you start to write an answer for customer segmentation or csr your answer will definitely be better than my answer because i have written the answer in a constraint of a time when i just had time to read one exhibit in a webinar is that clear to all of you okay now look at the examiner report and can you see the examiner report specific comments and in the specific comment can you see a specific comment for question number 1a and specific comment for question number 1b so let's first click on question number 1a and let's read the specific comments now the next 30 minutes is extremely important because that will guide you how you should read and how you should learn from the examiner report now i'll simultaneously develop my word file for examiner report and i'll do uh, this is exactly what you have to do at home when you're reading an examiner report either you do it with a pen and paper or you do it on a computer examiner report stronger students versus weaker students uh and that's what we're doing currently from the examiner report now suppose i am a student my exams is next week for sbl and my tutor guided me to read an examiner report so i'll just write here uh task i'll just write here task number 1a task 1a and i make two columns here insert table and in the table i make two columns uh do's and don'ts the do's are basically the stronger student and the and the don'ts are basically the weaker students and i will take a print out of this 
you will be taking a printout of this as well uh, to show that, okay, I have a summary of stronger and weaker students. Task 1A. Let's go back, start reading it. Okay, examiner is telling us this is the task 1A. We have read the task 1A yesterday, today, so you know what the task 1A is. It's about customer segmentation, and uh, you know you need to demonstrate the commercial acumen. Okay, now under the task 1A, see what the examiner is telling us. Now, I always tell my student that you need to have a green and a red pen when you are reading it manually. So suppose if you take a printout, right? Uh, just give me one second. If you take a printout, then you should have a red and a green pen. So wherever you find a weaker student, red, stronger student, green, because red is danger. But if you're reading it on a PDF like me, uh, then you can highlight it in green and red, just like you can see on screen, right? Now I'm reading, listen, concentrate. Overall, only a small number of answers displayed a full understanding of the customer segmentation. That means student has not read the examiner article. So that's the first harsh criticism of the examiner that student didn't have an idea what customer segmentation is. Amazing. When there was an article on the same subject available on the website, then whose responsibility is it to read the article? I might be a bit harsh in the next 30 minutes, uh, ensuring that this motivates you. The harshness is not to demotivate you, but the harshness is to reinforce that you need to wake up. You still have time. You still need to do something which can be, uh, which can help you to be successful in the upcoming exams next week. Stronger candidates were clearly those that knew and understood the syllabus topic. So they knew the customer segmentation and were able to discuss the benefits to Optima and identify and explain a range of segmentation types. However, there were many candidates who clearly did not understand what customer segmentation is. So first of all, who are the stronger candidates? Those that knew the topic and those that knew the benefits of customer segmentation and those that knew the types of customer segmentation. So that means they were the students who must have read the article. Agree or disagree? Stronger students. Those who knew. So reading the article is an important element. You go back. Weaker students read Weaker students often focused their answers incorrectly on the differences between high quality gym customers versus budgeted gym customers. Now, when you read the case study later, Optima was adopting a strategy of differentiation, high quality gym. That was also written in the exhibit one. When you read the exhibit two, it will also tell you that Optima is a, a high quality gym, not, not a cost leadership, not a cost leadership, right? So if any student is writing difference between a high quality gym customer versus a budgeted gym customer, instead of the specific value to Optima of segmenting its own customer, who are the customers of Optima? The one who are focused on cost or the one who are focused on quality. What sort of gym is Optima running? A cost leadership or a differentiation? Tell me. Is, is Optima running a gym uh, which is cost leadership or differentiation? Differentiation, quality. Then what is the argument uh, telling cost leadership versus differentiation? Wasting your time. The, uh, the case study again and again will tell you that Optima is adopting a model of differentiation. So weaker candidates often focus their answers incorrectly on the differences between high quality gym customers versus the budgeted gym customer instead of the specific value to Optima of segmenting its own customer, which I did for you. However, many candidates did pick up some marks by considering the importance of identifying specific customer needs, the impact on retention of customers and increasing market share. So examiner is saying these were good points that 
you picked up points like candidates pick points like specific customer need did we pick that as well specific customer needs impact on retention of the customers and increasing market share so exam saying these were good points in terms of value to optima control c you take it back control v next point these were good so exam saying these points if written were a good points in terms of value to optima and the weaker candidates focused on the difference between uh, high quality gym customers versus the budgeted gym customer instead of the specific value of segmenting its own customers. Control C and you take it back to the word file uh, and you bring the weaker students here. Control V. So see only on one question, the examiner is telling us so much weak and stronger and it continues. Next paragraph. Better students, better students mean uh, again the good students, better student means the stronger students right let's highlight that in green okay better students would go on to gain marks for points such as marketing efficiencies reducing the risk of running marketing campaigns to an uninterested customer did we wrote that point of marketing efficiencies devising a marketing campaign which is not a waste or running a marketing campaign which is more in the needs of the customer did, did we wrote a point like such so better candidates, examiner is saying, would focus on gaining marks on marketing efficiency because efficiency was the concern of the board of directors. So that was a better point. You take it back to the word file, the good students, the better students, and you go back to the examiner reports. Next paragraph. In the part A2, most candidates were able to present a number of demographic segmentations, example, age, gender, and some did cover behavioral segment types, such as fitness, activity, interest. Stronger students would gain two marks for each segmentation type if these examples were well explained in the context of Optima. So examiner is saying, if you explain each type of segmentation in the context of Optima, you will gain two marks. Did, did we perform that today? Did we uh, put demographic in the context of Optima? So stronger students will connect every segmentation type with uh, Optima. And examiner is saying most of the student did pick up the demographic and behavioral. However, very few candidates presented any examples of psychographic segment. So examiner is not happy He's saying many students didn't pick up the psychographic segment. Geographical segment was irrelevant to Optima. True? Out of the four segments available in the examiner article, geographic segment was irrelevant to Optima. So how many are we left with? Three. And how many points we have to make for a six marks answer? Three. So examiner is saying demographic was picked by most behavioral was picked by most but psychographic was picked by rare so he's not happy but i i hope you read uh, from the article the psychographic one so i'm putting that in the don'ts weaker students however very few candidates presented any example of a psychographic customer now at home if you can do this do's and don'ts analysis will you learn a lot when when you write an answer and you look at the examiner report, can, can it be a self-appraisal of your answer? If, if I write an answer as a tutor, I don't reconcile my answer with the examiner answer, never. I simply, after I write my points, because I'm not writing the full answer as a tutor, because I'm just preparing my lecture. So if I just write my points, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then I'll just open up the examiner report and I'll see, okay, this is my answer. Examiner is saying stronger student. And oh, I have at this point in my answer, tick. Uh, examiner is saying weaker student. Oh, I have this point in my answer, cross. So this is how you analyze your answer. So the better way to analyze your answer is to write your answer and then read the examiner report. If, if you have a point which the examiner is saying a weaker student point, cross it. 
And if the examiner is saying, this is the point which a stronger student wrote and you have it in the list, take it. Are you getting it, everyone? Are you trying to understand what I'm talk talking about? Please confirm that. And, and is it beneficial? Is it beneficial? So last, in several cases, candidates incorrectly discussed methods of data collection. <laughs> For example, the big data and the mobile applications rather than segmentation types. Examiner was asking you the types of segmentations and the, uh, the student wrote the methods to collect the data, big data and mobile application. Now, what can be done of such students? And then you say, whoa, why, why I failed in the SPL paper? After the results are out, you contact the tutor. I, I failed at 49, why? I, I failed at 48, why? You must have done something like this. Instead of writing the segmentations, you wrote the data collection. I, I hope you're getting an eye opener and importance of reading examiner report. There's so much to understand. Okay, rather than the segmentation types, demonstrating, demonstrating a lack of basic knowledge of customer segmentation. The best answer were those that pick up the professional marks were being awarded for commercial acumen and therefore focus their answers specifically on the value. Did I focus on this since yesterday to today that your answer has to be linked with the case study specifically to Optima and you will gain your professional marks, most of them. An examiner is saying this was the best answer that the one which specifically focused on Optima and I hope this is what I have been discussing with you since day, day two. Linking, linking, linking. And I, I did demonstrate that, right? Even last. This is, this is just the question number one commentary. This is 16 pages for the whole paper. Key weaknesses. A lack of basic technical knowledge. So I, I hope you learned something from the day three today that you should have technical knowledge, uh, not rote learn knowledge, but you should have knowledge which is adapted to the case study. So should you know the benefits of data analytics, benefits of artificial intelligence, benefit of machine learning, benefits of robotics, benefits of integrated reporting? Uh, should you know the Menlo metrics, the power and interest? Should you know the Porter diamond? You should know them, but you cannot reproduce them what you've learned. You just need to use the headings and then tailor the headings in the context of the case study. So lack of basic technical knowledge, number one. Lack of basic technical knowledge, number one. Red, failing to appreciate that Optima is applying a differentiation strategy when incorrectly suggesting that it should offer, it should offer lower prices, why? Why would Optima change the model? Optima is successful. They have 55 leisure clubs and they're offering the best facilities. So you need to segment the 230,000 customers on the business model Optima is applying rather than you suggest a different business model. Was the examiner asking you to criticize the business model? Why are you changing the business model of Optima when the question is not asking you to do so. So is everyone clear that Optima was demonstrating a differentiation strategy? Were they running high quality clubs? Right? So price was not the focus, right? Price was not the focus. Discussing differences between budgeted gym customers and high quality customers, which was not appropriate. Recommending income as a segmentation type, whereby Optima could focus on lower income customer income. Optima is not concerned about income bracket because they're offering high quality services. So every customer is affordable. Every customer can afford. So 230,000 customers are all affordable customers because they're paying a higher price. So income was not the right way to segmentize because Optima was adopting a differentiation strategy. Only recognizing demographic as a way of segmenting customer and not anything else. And to score high professional marks, candidate needs to demonstrate sound commercial acumen in showing awareness, in showing awareness of the usefulness 
of the customer segmentation specific to Optima. I think I've discussed that plenty of time now. Candidates who scored well on professional marks on this task did so because their answers were well focused on Optima and its customers and were not generic. See this? This is the key. This is the key. Candidates who scored well, not just in task 1A and 1B, candidates who scored well in the entire SPL paper did so because their answers were well focused to the case study and were not generic answers. This is the key to success in the entire SBL paper. And that's the best way to fetch most of your professional marks. Have I repeated this how many times since yesterday? This is the key. This is the key. Control C. I'll, I'll keep this as my key uh, for conclusion of day three today. So if you make a table like this, do's and don'ts, and you say, okay, this is what I should be doing and this is what I should not be doing. Can you learn a lot? Or even if you're not making a table, reading the report with a red and green, reinforce, absorb, absorb in your mind. I think 20 to 30% of what we discussed just now must have gone in your mind. Next, quickly, 1B, task 1B, presentation. Are you all ready for task 1B? Presentation, two slides. The question clearly asks candidates to explain the strategic importance to Optima of demonstrating a strong CSR. Candidates were also given a specific list of stakeholders to whom Optima needs to demonstrate the CSR. This task was split into two clear sections, specifically designed to help candidates structure their presentation slides and notes. Many candidates made a reasonable attempt at this task and demonstrated some effective communication skills. However, many candidates simply copied and pasted parts of the exhibits with little or no further debate. This is also a very big problem in SBL. This is a very big problem in SBL, not just in task 1B. This is also a very big problem in the overall SBL. This one. I'm writing 1A and 1B together, 1A and 1B. So many candidates copied and pasted parts of exhibits with little or no further development or explanation. If you just simply copy paste things from exhibits and you're not developing them into point, what, 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 what are you doing? Are you evaluating? Are you analyzing? What are you doing? You're doing nothing. You will fail the SPL paper. So for me, this paragraph and for me, this paragraph. I will take this as a conclusion paragraph that student who pass SBL simply pass because they're not writing a generic answer and student who just copy paste things from exhibit and not develop them is a useless answer. Key learnings, key learnings from the examiner report so far. Okay, the weakest candidates were those that failed to focus the answer on why CSR was strategically important to Optima. There were many generic CSR comments and other irrelevant point made in the answer. Also candidates were given the specific stakeholders to discuss, but many ignored. So was the examiner telling us customer, staff, wider community? If you ignore them and you write your own stakeholders, what use? And strategic importance, what benefit will Optima get out of CSR strategically? Market share? retention, uh, improving their competitiveness in the market. This, this is strategic importance, right? Key weaknesses, copy and pasting the exhibits with no attempt to explain them, failing to focus on strategic importance, discussing irrelevant issues such as investor being interested only in profits. <laughs> Why? We are, we are saying what benefit is of CSR to Optima and you're saying investors are only in concern in profit, not CSR. But realizing the fact that a CSR builds the reputation of the company, and if the company has a good repute, will the investor like to will, will the investor like to invest in a company with a good reputation? See this point. Rather than you say, "Oh, what's what's the use? Uh, what what Optima is doing is wrong," because investors are concerned in profit, not CSR. Was the examiner asking that? 
was the examiner asking you to criticize Optima CSR? Or was the examiner asking us to appreciate the Optima CSR in terms of why it is of strategic importance to Optima? So you are criticizing or how CSR could lead to better base for employees, neither of which relates to Optima specific CSR activity. We are concerned with that if you are doing CSR for employees, it will boost the motivation of employees. It will improve the retention of the staff. If the staff retention is improved, the image of the club will be better. The customers will be happy, so on and so forth. To score high professional marks, candidates need to demonstrate sound communication skill by ensuring that the points they made would be of use in convincing the board of the strategic importance of CSR. You are writing a presentation to the board, so your points have to be convincing. That is another quality, right, of a good communication skill. So when you say that customers will be retained, staff will be motivated, uh, the staff turnover will go down, are, are you convincing the board of the CSR? Yes, you're telling, you're telling the importance, you're telling the benefits. But if you start criticizing the CSR, you're not convincing the board. Therefore, this was not just about presenting uh, presenting the slides and notes. The tone and strategic focus were critical. So it's, it was not just presenting the slides, but the tone that you're justifying it's important and your uh, and strategic focus was important. So your points should have a strategic focus. Those candidates that failed to demonstrate a technical focus on strategic importance of CSR activity to Optima also then fail to score well on professional marks. Yes, we should give hope to BOD. We should appreciate BOD that the CSR you're doing is good for your company because it's resulting in customer retention, reputation, goodwill, more investors are coming to our company. We are having a better image as a club. We are having a market, better market share as a club. We need to speak of the goods, right? Because what Optima is doing is good, not bad. So we should appreciate the board that what you are doing, stick to it. Rather than saying, why are you doing CSR? You are compromising the profit of the shareholder. You cannot write sentences like such. I hope you're getting my point here. But imagine the, uh, the reading of the examiner report so far in the limitation again of the webinar of the task 1A and 1B, has it given you some thought process? If you have never read examiner reports before this webinar and how detailed they are, how detailed they are. Now, I just want to focus on one thing. We'll, we'll do another last exercise on September, December 21 paper tomorrow. I will do another question with an examiner report and I'll keep the last day for reinforcement of models and theories and knowledge, which knowledge is important, which knowledge needs to be reinforced, like benefits, 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 benefits. We'll do a holistic summary on day five, but tomorrow let's, let's continue with September, December 21 paper, if you all agree with me. And let's do another question from September, December 21 paper. So at least two questions with uh, comments on examiner reports will be very fruitful for you to learn lots of things. But let's, let's take key learning from today. I believe there are two key learnings from today. Key learnings from the day two. Day three, sorry. I believe this is the first key learning. Control C, control V. Candidates who scored well on professional skills did so let's make it specific let's make it journalized did so because their answers were well focused on the case study and well focused on the case study the company its environment the company and its environment and not and were not generic answers. So that's the first thing which you have to hold as critical, which you have to hold as critical, right? Extremely critical. And secondly, this, I, I think since yesterday to today, when I was using the platform, I was also copying, but was I copying the paragraphs? I was just copying a word or a statement 
but I was developing that into my words, right? I didn't copy pasted anything and say, oh, this is the answer. No, I just copy pasted to remember something, but I translated that into my own answer. I hope you agree with me. Number two, many candidates simply copied and pasted parts of exhibits with little or no further development or explanation of the relevance to the question asked. One good point, one bad point. But I hope that sounds like two good points for all of you. So it's extremely important that when you are on the platform, just let me show you that for one instance, let, for the final 10 minutes, let's take you back to the platform for one minute. Just let me close this slide. Okay, look at the platform again <clears throat> and listen. When you copy the task uh, onto the word processor, right? Which we have done so on the day one, right? We have all the task in the word processor right here, right? Now, when you start to write the answer, customer segmentation, value to optimize, and ways to, when you're reading the exhibit, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in a certain exhibit, you will come across CSR. In a certain exhibit, you will come across mobile technology. In a certain exhibit, you will come across uh, number of employees. In a certain exhibit, you will come across the age, age of the member, 65 years, something like that. And at the back of the mind, you know, I have a topic customer segmentation. I have a topic mobile technology. I have a, a topic uh, internal control weaknesses. I have a topic uh, big data. Now, wherever you find something about them, you will come back to the word processor and you will copy that statement on the word processor for you to remember that this needs to be translated into your answer. I, I think I demonstrated that just by this assess the value to Optima and I copied something like this from my reading. Now, when I come back and start writing the answer for assess the value to Optima, I know they have 230 members. I know they run swimming classes. I know they want the market uh, positioning to get stronger. And I know they want to run the, their operations efficiently. This will be converted to my answer and then I delete these bullets. So when I convert this to the answer, I'll simply delete this off. Then you go down. Uh, if you find something about the BFIT program, dump it. If you find something about value for money, dump it. If you find something about big data, dump it. I'll, we'll do another exercise tomorrow, the final one. And I'll take another question in focus. Either I'll take this uh, BFIT tomorrow, which is this, task number 2A and 2B, or I might take the task 4, which is the weaknesses in the internal control system. But I'll show you that if you are reading a task and you're reading an exhibit, how would you dump an exhibit into a task and then convert that to an answer? Is that clear to all of you? So should we do another task tomorrow as a final one uh, with a translation of copy paste and converting that to an answer? So I'll, I'll, do, a better, I'll do a better drill of copying from the exhibit, dumping it to a task and converting it to the answer rather than writing it on my word file. So let's, let's do it in a bit more different manner. Right. Okay. So we'll do one final drill on the platform. Uh, another way of uh, copying, pasting, uh, another way of reading and extracting, and another way of converting the answer and gaining the professional marks. So I think one more exercise will boost up your confidence. I hope you all agree with me. So uh, I would prefer that when you come for the day four webinar, uh, if you can read the... Uh, Exhibit number eight, exhibit number eight, which contains the weaknesses in the internal control system. Can you read the exhibit number eight, which contains the weaknesses in the internal control system? If I do the task number four, and if I do the task number two, which is about the BFIT program, 
I would prefer that you read the exhibit number six. Can you all see the exhibit number six? It's about a BFID program. So I, I will prefer that you read exhibit six, seven, and eight for the day for tomorrow. So read, read the exhibit six, seven, and eight. That will make the session more productive. But have you learned something out of the day today? So the final learnings, read articles, don't ignore them. Don't ignore them like customer segmentations. Just I, I'll just uh, do one thing. Just give me five minutes. Read articles, don't ignore them like customer segmentations. And also, I was just discussing one thing. Uh, for day four, uh, read exhibits six, seven, and eight. That's, that's important, right? So just to write that on the Word file. Just, just now listen to me. Uh, let me take you back to the articles, articles, articles. Okay. Uh, can you see the articles on the screen again? All of you. Now, there are certain articles which is like, uh, extremely important because they contain benefits, importance, and every such thing which can make impact on your paper, right? So it's not like important articles. It's not like, oh, these articles will come in the paper because the tutor told me. No, this is not like that. But these are, articles are like very important. How much days are you left with? Just like six days. But if you start reading now, you cannot read all of them. I think there are like 28 articles. But let's, let's go one by one. Leadership. I think culture, this culture and configuration is must read article number one. Let's open that on the next tab. Culture and configuration number one. Uh, leave aside ethical decision making. Governance. Stakeholders, no. Mentor metrics, you know mental metrics, that's fine. Uh, corporate governance inside out, no. Diversifying the board, because that's a crucial area. Examiner covered the advantages of diversifying the board. What if in the next exam setting, examiner ask you about the benefits of diversifying the board? So I, I'll prefer diversifying the board as important. Uh, independence, fine. You all know about the threats to independence. That's more like a double A topic. Public sector, public sector governance. What are advantages and limitations of public sector? Because public sector comes in a lot. Even in the September, December 21 paper, we saw the BFIT program, which was public sector. Uh, integrated reporting, I prefer you read it because it contains the benefits of integrated reporting. Okay, strategy, again, customer segmentation, read it again. Strategic planning process. No, I will not prefer that. Risk. Uh, yes, the COSO enterprise risk management. You should read this out. Strategic and operational risk. No. A world of intelligent agent. This is extremely important because this, this came in the September 21 syllabus, right? So it's a very new article. So you should know about artificial intelligence, data analytics, and machine learning. World of intelligent agent. Principles and applications of e-marketing. Yes, that is extremely important. Cybersecurity. No. Applying the big data, yes. Big data is such a repetitive topic in SPL. Uh, internal audit, no. I think a lot of knowledge coming from AA, environmental auditing, no. Uh, assessing organization performance. The Bal Balbridge Performance Excellence Model, yes, this should be read, enabling success and change. Uh, blockchain, blockchain can come. Blockchain is very uh, like hype topic. Uh, cryptocurrencies, you cannot ignore them because, again, that's such a hype topic. Fine. Now, how many articles have opened up? Let's let's make a list of that quickly. Uh, must to read articles. I hope that will must to read articles in last seven days before exams. Are you listening to me? Is that something of your interest? I think of a greater interest, right? Because this is something the student takes interest in when the tutor tells, this is to be read. And students, oh, yes, I will be. Okay, which articles, uh, if I remember, one was uh, culture and configuration as per the title on the website. Culture and configuration, number one. Number two was uh, diversifying the board diversifying the board, public sector governance, diversifying the board, public sector governance, diversifying the board, public sector governance. Okay, next, come back. 
after the public sector governance, we had integrated reporting, integrated report, market segmentation, integrated report, market segmentation, integrated report, market segmentation, right? Next, uh, the COSO, enterprise risk management, a world of intelligent agent. COSO, the enterprise risk management. COSO, enterprise risk management. Uh, the world of intelligent agent, very important. World of intelligent agent. Right next, if you've read some of them, good, very good. So your list will go down. Uh, then principles and applications of e-marketing, principles and applications of e-marketing, principles and application. We know marketing comes a lot of e-marketing. And see, you go to the June exam, just like customer segmentation, you find a 15 marks question on e-marketing. What will you do? Or you go to the June exam, and you find a 10 marks question on cryptocurrencies. What will you do? Regretting yourself or it's better to read the article? Tell me. Just like December 21 students regretted, oh, if we would have read the customer segmentation article would have been good. Okay, next. Applying big data. Applying big data. Uh, the bal Applying the big data, the Malbridge performance excellence model, applying big data, big data, the Belgridge okay, the Belgridge performance excellence model and the blockchain, the blockchain are revolution and cryptocurrencies. Blockchain, a revolution, and a cryptocurrency, whatever the title is after. I hope the first words help you pick the article from the website. So if I just number them, I think they're in total 12, right? Is that a big list? Considering the, if a question comes for 10 or 12 marks, right? Is this a big list? Is this a lame excuse? Oh, we cannot read it. Time is so less. What if a 10 marks question, a 12 marks question on any of this topic comes in June exam? What will you do then? So will you sit down today and start reading them? At least like one to two articles a day. Some of them are very simple. Two articles a day. In six days, you're wrapping up. And, and some of you might have read some of them, right? So for you, the list becomes more easier. But if you have read none, then I cannot do anything about it. How, how many of you have read none of them? Zero. So you, ha you have to read all 12 then, right? But if some of you have read majority of them, you are in a very better position. You can just revise them, reinforce them. So I, I hope this is important. You should have information about culture, diversifying. You should have information about public sector. You should have in information about integrated report. You should have information about segmentation, COSO, the world of intelligent agent, which is more about artificial intelligence. You should have, uh, you should have information about e-marketing. You should have information about big data. You should have information about the, the Bal Rich performance excellence model blockchain and cryptocurrencies, right? That is it. And that is also marking the end of my webinar day two, which is right in front of your screen now. So we'll come back with key learnings from day three tomorrow uh, when I'll start the day four. And uh, again, the focus will be on the practice platform and examiner reports and much more tool. And I think tomorrow will be the final day for September, December 21 paper. And uh, one more drill, one more understanding, one more insights and you get a lot. So I, I hope uh, each day with September, December 21 paper is giving you some more or some new dimensions to think about, right or wrong? Each day of a September, December 21 paper is giving you something to think about, something 
to learn something of incremental marks, something of an opportunity. And tomorrow will be the final day for the September, December 21 paper. And then the fifth day, the final one will be holistic SPL, uh, bringing SPL at one point, important models, important theories, how to learn, how to go about it, because that's, that's like a key revision, right, of the core areas, right? So thank you so very much uh, for joining this webinar live, uh, the day three of the SBL webinar to success for June 22 exams. I wish you all a very best of luck and study effectively in these last crucial days left for all of you. Uh, and I'll see you back tomorrow uh, at the same time uh, we had the webinar today. That is 12.30 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time for another insightful session on September, December 21 paper. Take care of yourself. Uh, have a nice day ahead and study effectively. Take care. Goodbye. And Allah Hafiz. This is your tutor, Kashif Kamran, signing off from the day three of the SPL webinar to success. Goodbye and Allah Hafiz.